Now, does this go up front or back? Yeah, that'll go in the front. Is it heavy? Is this coming? I don't know if there is such a thing as regular primary care anymore in this province. There's so many different um, iterations and variations in terms of how we provide primary care. Traditionally, we have looked at illness. We have not looked at health care. We've looked at illness care. That needs to change because illness care is way too expensive. Northwest Community Health Centers is part of a network of community health centers across the province. We will have physicians, nurse practitioners, nurses, foot care nurses, dietitians, counselors, all under one roof. We serve priority populations. A lot of seniors, families, a lot of individuals that have difficulty accessing primary care. We're really the only one that goes out in the region on a regular rotation. We have two mobile health services. One is primary care. The other one specializes in diabetes services, and some communities are served twice a month. When we're thinking about the needs of our population, access to care is a huge need. We have the geography the size of France, yet only 234,000 people that live in that geography. How do you actually deliver care to a senior's population that's aging, that uh, the distribution is older than the rest of Ontario, and you just don't have the critical mass in the publicly funded model or in the privately funded channels? How do you deliver service from end to end across the continuum to this population? A lot of people in this province don't realize how big the North is. We serve actually the district of Thunder Bay. My staff will travel for three hours in a vehicle to get from site to site. Our seniors have a special challenge, especially seniors in some of the small communities. Um, and part of the problem is the lack of resources in these communities. And it, quite frankly, doesn't make sense to put a lot of resources in these communities because we're looking at, in some situations, a population of 500 people which is why we use the mobile units. Perfect. All right. Just turn the heat up, it's freezing. Behind that table. We deal with yeah. all the issues. So somebody might be coming to me for foot care, but um, talking to them, I might realize they have other issues and then I can direct them to the nurse practitioner or I can direct them to the, to the community health worker. One of the biggest things, we keep people at home where they belong instead of having to go into town, drive two hours, you know, when you're thinking about it, then wait for their appointment. It's a whole entire day. No, because you actually have to coat it, then oh. wash it, and then you... To me, it feels just like an old friend when you come to see these girls all the time, eh? She says, oh, what have you been doing? Or what you, haven't you been doing? And you better do some more walking and, and don't wear those wet socks anymore, <laughs> you know? So they do my AC1 test, and they check my little book with all my sugars I've been for the last three weeks, a month, whatever, and then with my feet... Deborah checks that all the time, check, make sure the nails are cut right. Well, I don't even cut my nails anymore. I get it done here, because it's done right. There you go. I'm Deborah. I'm the foot care nurse. It's really keeping people moving by having foot care service. There. Are, are you good? Oh, I'll be able to see what you're doing. That's right. People have arthritis or stiff joints, and they can't manage, they couldn't manage a, a clipper, and they can't see what they're doing. Sometimes just a little nick can um, be a very dangerous thing for a diabetic. As long as we have uh, an area where we can set up, then we can provide care. It's amazing what um, people will adjust to. Some of the feedback that we've had from clients has been outstanding. We had one woman who had a full physical exam behind a curtain and basically said that, you know, this is the best, most comfortable physical that I've ever had. Um, sitting in a lawn chair with a nurse practitioner behind a curtain in a library. It's not about the location so much, it's more about how you present the services. 
and how you adapt them and the relationship with the people. We start with the needs first. We start with the population characteristics first and we then try to figure out what are the networks that are required, what are the partnerships that we can use to meet those needs. This is a population that we really um, need to focus on up in the north and we really need to uh, to be innovative in how we approach these individuals. They don't want to leave their homes and quite frankly I don't blame them. Transportation is a big problem, especially with seniors when they get into their 80s, they lose their license. If their children are living in Thunder Bay, um, you know, their children can support them. But if they don't have children, if they don't have family, they're pretty isolated, so they rely on their neighbors for support. That can be spotty, it can be non-existent in places. That leaves seniors alone, um, it leaves them isolated, uh, and it, it quite often leaves them in a situation where they have no supports. We don't have um, hardly any or uh, at all uh, assisted living or supportive housing outside of the city of Thunder Bay. If you combine an aging population without the critical mass for the full spectrum of seniors care, it's resulting in a lot of care being delivered in hospitals where uh, there may be better settings. In terms of being cost effective, we provide uh, service via our mobile units um, to, to 10 remote communities. So if you thought about putting 10 buildings up in those communities, and even if the staff weren't there full time, that's a significant amount of money. We can take a van and provide service for roughly 500,000 to all those communities. That's, that's with you know full complement of staff, all the equipment, uh, we're providing primary care and health promotion for that. So it's extremely cost effective. When you're trying to make an investment decision or an allocation decision, how do you control for all those variables, especially when many of them have to do with income levels, education levels, housing availability, and so on and so forth? Sometimes we have to make those decisions with uh, maybe not having all the data that we would like. Data can be tricky. Data in and of itself and alone without the other context I think can be um, misleading. I think it doesn't tell the true picture and you miss the human piece. And once you do that, I don't believe you're going to be providing the services you need to particular individuals and communities. So if I have a community of 500 people and we're seeing X number of visits per, per year or per day, those numbers are really going to look a whole lot different than a downtown uh, community um, in, in Toronto. And how do you compare that? It's, it's not comparing apples to apples. We walk that fine line between evidence-based decision-making and entrepreneurial innovative thinking. We have to use professional judgment. We have to weigh out what are the risks of moving forward without maybe uh, not having all the perfect evidence and data that we want. This model of care has been around for over 30 years. I think it's now being recognized as a viable model of care for the whole population. Our philosophy is the right person at the right place in the right time. Well, it's interesting, all of a sudden population health is on the radar and it has a name now. We're looking at, at people, we're not looking at specific illnesses. If we can keep people healthier, if we can look at interdisciplinary models, if we can look at health promotion, if we can look at ways of keeping people in their home, it will cost less to the healthcare system because we'll keep them out of the expensive institutions.